So we've just put a few sheets downstairs, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, we're upstairs at the moment in the loft. There's the loft hatch, and basically I've got to cut an L shape out of this loft hatch. So I've got some plasterboard supports, which I've got downstairs, holding up this bit of ceiling there, just so that when we cut through some of these old joists now, the ceiling doesn't fall down. And obviously when I get some new posts in place and some new joists, I'll be able to support that little section of ceiling up. And the idea being we should have the stairs going down that way, taking a left turn that way, and then to gain some extra space, this little bit there will be left remaining in the loft for some storage. So we're underneath the hatch now, we've put this plasterboard prop up there, and that means when we cut through all the old joists across there, this isn't going to fall down, because obviously this bit of ceiling here, I want remaining. We're going to have a gap then going across there and coming back towards us here, where the stairs spiral around. So now coming down to the floor, this is my landing. We've got this little bit that juts in there, and this is where I'm able to take advantage and bring a staircase down there towards me and back around out onto the landing. And if we look around there, my stairs are just down there, which we've got covered in sheets at the moment, and all the doors are closed to avoid dust going in any of the bedrooms. So there's a plan of the staircase. I bought these from Stairbox and uh, basically designed them online myself. And they give you a nice 3D picture with dimensions and then you get this plan as well to work with. So there's a quick look at the stairs, um, all in pieces at the moment. And it sort of came in a few parts. You've got this top section, all came together. You've got to add a few stairs. Um, you can see where you've got your posts and things like that, that it's all CNC machined. So they should pop straight into there. Uh, you get the posts as part of the kit that you've ordered. I've added some extra dado rails and some additional posts to do my landing as well. You can see there the winder, your steps there, there's another three underneath. So you get the general idea, it sort of comes part built. You can order them fully built as well, but you might have trouble getting that up inside your house. You've got your box there of all your bits with your caps. So it basically comes in pieces, all boxed up. You've got to check everything's there um, and then kind of semi-assemble it yourself. So we'll be doing that a bit later in the video. <laughs> so far we've cut this ceiling out in our L shape now now it's a bit rough we're gonna have to obviously probably tidy bits up around the edge and make it a bit more accurate later on but what we've been trying to do is pretty much remove the plasterboard first bring that down and then we'll be going through the lath then and cutting that away we gave it a good hoover over the top of the Henry beforehand so we minimize the dust we then down here I've just been over it again with the, the good old Henry and we've tidied up all the, the landing area so we can carry on working and hopefully now it's not going to be too messy and by the end of the day all the messy work will be done and we can carry on constructing. You can see it from up top we've got the uh, plasterboard props just holding that section up there for now. Obviously we've got to tie that into one of the posts on the stairs with some new joists just to hold that little small area up there and then the stairs you can now see they'll go down that way turn left and back towards the landing. And anyway, here we go we got old ugly big house yeah, yeah. with a building tub. You just been out Create a nice bonfire for me. Can't quite see it from there, but we've been putting everything in the garden. And given this bonfire night in a few days, I'll be perfect. Think of the environment, burn your waste. <laughs> Sure. Right, take it in a bit so I can cable. There we are. Right, here we go. 
So as you can see here, we've done a bit of trial and error with the stairs. We've got a big pipe down there now, he's just chopping out a bit of the architrave. We marked that up where the stairs is gonna go across that door frame diagonally. Then up here, we had a few attempts at this. It ended up we had to take a, a chunk of the brickwork out just by there, just to allow the bottom of the, um, the runner to fit in there. And now that sits nicely on this joist. Um, this side we've done the same. We had to trim a little bit out there on the mortar. So the stairs are gonna fit nicely on here. We just gotta attach a post to this side of the stairs. We're gonna have to trim a little bit out the back of the post to fit in around the back of this joist. So it's all fiddly work, a bit of a pain in the, in the bum. But we're getting there and hopefully in a few hours we'll have this top bit in place with a post, loosely sat up and uh, we'll go from there and then be back on it tomorrow. clean up because I got the family coming back home in about half an hour so we're gonna make sure the landing was clean and the carpet and all the sheets are cleared out in the garden but anyway we've got a bit done probably not quite as much as I was hoping to do today but having said that we did come across a few little problems things like when we had to chip away the brickwork up there and it was things that we probably didn't quite anticipate but now we're set up ready to go in the morning so I'll give you a quick look at what we've done today so currently this is just in loose this post here but we've got one post in um, we had to trim it down slightly at the bottom just to get the height right because the floor on this landing does dip slightly. It actually travels down this way. So what you find is, is although we've got it level at the top up there, as it comes down, that post needed trimming slightly. Then by the time you get to the bottom step, you'll find that needs trimming a touch, I think, but not so much because obviously as you get closer to this end, you're at your final height, which obviously I had to measure from this end of the stairs over to that end. Because it's a double winder, it goes around. So you're sort of measuring from that point up to that point there, if that makes any sense. And then if you look here, we've got my plaster board props. I bought these years ago from Screwfix. Really useful, I've used them for loads of things. But that's just holding up this bit of sealing there before we get the new joist in to hold that in place. Um, we've got another one under there, just holding that stairs up. And we've put two angle brackets on the top of the stairs at the moment, just screwed them into the joist just to hold that in place so it doesn't fall down overnight. Um, I'll just take you up in the loft and we'll have a quick look now. Apologies for the lack of light. But you can see now how you'll come up these stairs and as you come up them you'll enter into the loft like that so looking back down at the floor you can see me clambering up we'll now be able to see that the stairs you come down here you'll twist to the left and back down towards the landing that way and then this will ever so slightly overhang the old um, staircase and then turn back into the landing with a nice um, bull nose step at the bottom. So the biggest problem we had today was just fitting this top step into place. Now to get it level with this joist, which is where it needed to be, it was being held up slightly by a brick wall below. So under here, we had to chip a little bit out of the brickwork on the top of the mortar. So we've now got clearance just under the stairs there. Then this joist more or less sits above that wall and that allowed us to drop this down into place. But that was just very fiddly, chopping it out and cutting bits of brick and whatnot. And then obviously we've leveled this up just about right now. We've got that post in temporarily. And then tomorrow, we've just got to put on this side, I've got a post, because I've got a handrail going down that side and a wall on this side. And by putting that post in, it means that I'm gonna to have to trim a little bit of the post out and around that joist. And then you'll have the full size post on the top and then a nice handrail going all the way down then with continuity right to the bottom. Although it's a bit dark out there, hopefully you can see the wonderful views that I've now got by doing this loft conversion. And to be honest, that's part of the reason I wanted to do it. 
because I've got such a lovely landscape out there. It'll be absolutely fantastic sitting there at your desk, doing a bit of work, editing my YouTube videos for you lot, whilst looking over there at all that. Nice. <laughs> So the next morning we're back, we've got a big post down here, Hello. giving the orders, say yeah. good morning. Good morning everybody. Okay, now we've been doing a bit of measuring up, fiddling around again, but basically we're going to pull these stairs up there, we're going to try and attach the post in place. We've got to put the risers, the treads on again with some glue, we're using today this um, Gorilla Glue. So this will slightly expand which helps uh, stop any creaks and fit it all together nicely. Um, so that's about it, we'll get it up, fit it together and we're going to start and work our way back down the stairs. Right, so now's a good time to show you quickly. Um, we're putting the steps into place. Then you have to put the wedges underneath like that, which we're just driving in. Then you put your risers up. Um, we've been using the Gorilla Glue to seal it all together. And as you can see by there then, there's some pre-drilled holes and we're just popping these screws through. But enough of that, we've got to get on with it because the glue's going off and uh, back with you in a bit. So we just stopped for a bit of dinner, about to get back on with it. But as you can see here, we've got that stairs at the top there in, just loosely fastened at the top so it doesn't fall down. We've got this post in, it's a bit fiddly because you basically have to get this step in here. Um, in with the post before you can do anything else and then work your way back up to that step and then you start coming back down again. This post isn't bang on level at the moment. When we finish, we have to kind of shift the stairs up a little bit that way. But we'll do that later once everything's in place. While we've been out, this glue's been drying off a bit because um, you can see there it foaming up. It's like this polyurethane glue. It's actually Gorilla Glue, the original stuff. So that's doing a nice job expanding in there now, making it all nice and tight. And this is a bit like expanding foam. You can just scrape it off uh, when you're finished. Obviously, you don't want to get too much over your pine work, but not too much of a problem. Looking from the side of the stairs here, you can see that we slot these stair treads in place like that. And then you push the riser up behind it there. We've also got these wedges that come supplied with the kit. So you wedge those up, you wedge one underneath there as well. So it holds the tread in place, holds the riser in place. On these corner ones on the winder, there's two wedges by there like that. And then if you look on the pre-assembled bit of stairs, we've got these blocks by there. I've got to fit those into place on here afterwards, but I'll do that once we're all in place, I think. Secure it up once everything's been twisted round and we know it's all leveled up and ready to go. Just show you at the top of the stairs there, we've got our post, which that had to be fitted to the stairs before you were put in place because it slid from the back. I had to trim a bit out of that post actually at the top there. Had to cut the back off it to slide down the small gap behind the joist. Um, and then we can secure through that into the joist at some point, but again, not essential at the moment. And just to show you how these bits fit, they line up with the pre-drilled holes inside this stringer, and then you whack these devils through that come supplied with the kit, and then we'll just cut that down to size after and run the sander over it, and then you should just have two nice round flat or flush bits of matching pine. And you can see that's one that hasn't been done yet. They come pre-drilled, you slot your joint into there and then put your dowel through the side holding it together and with the addition of some Gorilla Glue. So over on this wall we got the stringer held up roughly at the bottom with that post. We'll fasten that up into another half post newel later on and again that probably needs to be tilted up slightly but all in all it's good now. We've got it um, secured together down to there so we've got to finish this off, turn it back around that way. I'll probably put you back on the time lapse again and uh, we'll go from there. So at the moment we got down to there, um, but we're having issues with the, the post being slightly off. Basically the whole staircase just needs to be pivoted up a little bit. We've just got the car jack, we've got a big post over there now. We're just going to gently jack this side of the stairs up. Then we've released the screws we were holding on with at the top. We're just going to shimmy it across that way until we get it into the wall. Then hopefully we can start to fix it to the wall once it's level and that post's on the floor. And then once we're happy, all that's in place, we'll work our way down and do the rest of the steps. But until then, you don't want to do too much and then find that it's not level. And obviously your final step then 
you just trim the bottom of that down ever so slightly then just to, to meet the floor if you need to. So apologies for the lighting now, we're getting a little bit dark, but I'm just going to show you how these shims work. This is one that came with the kit. I'm just going to put some Gorilla Glue in there, knock on it with a hammer and wedge it into place. And then you just do exactly the same with the ones across the top as you do with those. Just put a little bit of the glue on there. What I found with this is you don't want to be generous, but you don't want to be too stingy either, to be honest, because it takes a while to set. And in these stairs, you want it to expand out a bit. So as long as it's not going to get over your pine, get a bit on. You can see that there. And that should be enough on this. I just place that in there like that and push it up. And I'm going to get my hammer. If I go around here, hopefully I won't be in your way. Now I've got to come back around now because I'm actually dripping glue on the floor. So I need to see what's going on here. get another piece like that you can use that to knock it up just get a bit tight but that is as far as that's going so that's it again for today as you can see we managed to get the stairs down to here now a lot of the time we've had has been spent really trying to make sure that the stairs is nice and square because we had to secure it at the top temporarily while we worked on it so it didn't come tumbling down and then once it's secured you try to sort of work out these steps there's a certain order you've got to do them in the one there on the winder had to go in before the post was in or you'd never fit it in then you have to work your way back up and then back down. And unfortunately, when you do that, you find the stairs is slightly out. So you then got to go back to the top, unscrew it, move it round a bit and try and get everything nice and square. Because you alter one and the stair goes level and then another one goes at an angle. So it's a bit of to and fro in. But we finally got there. So what we've done now is secured the stringers into the wall with some masonry screws there. They'll be hidden underneath the stairs. We've done the same over there. We've obviously got this post which is holding... Um, the stairs in place and added structural support. So all we've got left now is another post here, then the winder and down to the ground. So hopefully by the end of tomorrow, we'll get that sorted. And I'll just show you now that you can actually walk up this staircase. Well, half a staircase anyway. So let's have a look. There we go. Another update, we're just down to the bottom step now, we haven't fixed that in place. You can see we're coming all the way round there, all the risers, all the treads in, stringer in. This post here, this half newel post, we fixed that all to the, the stringers, but it's not actually fixed to the wall just yet. We're leaving that loose for the moment until we get this final step in place. So all we've got to do is take a little bit off the bottom of that, just to fit it in place and slot it into the recess on these posts, because obviously this is all... CNC machine so there's all slots in the post for that to go into and then if you just come around the side here you can see that each post you have these dowels that go through that holds it all securely together there there um, and when you come underneath like I showed you earlier in the video you've got these wedges that go up there and then you have a wedge so a wedge underneath each tread a wedge underneath each or behind each riser and that holds it all nice and solid and we've obviously been using this Gorilla Glue. It's a bit messy but obviously none of this is on display on the back and we can scrape all that off when it foams up eventually. That expands and it's worth doing it because it makes your stairs nice and solid and we won't have any creaks later on then. Um, and then across here then you just have your, your screws you just put in the back of each riser into the MDF tread. Um, on this particular one I think it's 32mm MDF treads I ordered. 
and I went for the pine stringers at the side because I think it looks a bit nicer and I'll probably try and stain this and match it all into the the new banister that I put on obviously this old one's going to be coming out I've only left that there at the moment for a bit of safety for the dog and children so they don't go falling down the stairs until I've done it. Apologies for the fact that most of this has been time lapse and there's not much detail but to be honest with you a lot of it is just repetition and there's been a lot of working out how to do it as we go along so it wouldn't be a very entertaining video if you just saw us two scratching our heads and thinking which one do we put in next. However it's more or less once you've got that top section in we came around and there was um, a way you had to do it. Steer box obviously give instructions online and there's one step you had to get in first which I explained earlier if you didn't and you glued it together you wouldn't get it in basically because of that corner then once that's in you can work your way down then it's kind of the same again here with this post you've got to get in this step first and then we went back and put that one in I think that's how we did it anyway um, other than that it's more or less put your tread in tap in a wedge Put your riser in, tap in a wedge up that way, and then so on. And then obviously when you come to each corner, you've just got to really sort of work it out and dry fit it. And then once you're happy, everything's sorted, get the glue in. But that Gorilla Glue, if you put that in and you've got to pull it back out, is really tough because we did have a bit of a problem where we did that with one and forgot to get the dowels in. And we had to drill some of the dowels out and remove it. And it took quite a bit of work just to get the post back off before we could carry on again. Um, obviously I didn't show that because again not very entertaining for a video so now coming down behind this bull nose you'll notice that there's some blocks of timber there and there and now is what we did was screwed down the top of those into the floor and then we've screwed from the front of the step into those once it was in position just to hold the base of it in place um, obviously this is countersunk or recessed I suppose is a better word into this post here because it was all made CNC machine so that's nice and solid and that holds this post up and so on really this post is still loose, I haven't stuck that on yet. This top half of the post, you can see there, is still loose, it's just sat in place. So these are all things I've got to work out when I do the handrails, pack it up a little bit. I'll probably have to use some grab adhesive in the back of these and whatever, I'll work it out as I go along. So another quick walk up, like we did earlier in the video. So I go up these stairs, you can see now we turn again to the right and as we come up, there's the loft. There we go, so we're up here raining today but there's a view out of that window view out of that window over the fields you can't really see anything today because the weather's miserable and then here's the stairs again and back down like that so there we go see you in a bit right so i'm back i've had a few hours now where obviously some of the glue's been going off i had that tidy up earlier i've had some food Unfortunately, I've needed to buy some bits. I've been doing that thing where you're messing around. I've been down to screw fix and I've had to go to tool station, get various bits to carry on. So it's getting a bit late now, but I'm going to carry on into the evening because the house is empty so I can push on. So now I've got to create some holes in this post here to secure it to the wall. Now, when I do this, it's obviously going to leave a hole which I don't want exposed. In order to cover these up, I've got to make some wood plugs that'll cover the hole or the head of the screw. These didn't come supplied with the kit because obviously. It's up to you where you want to put your screws through. Now, those of you that are regular viewers of my channel may have seen a previous video where I show you how to make your own wood plugs using the Yerbauer plug cutting set. And if you want to see that video, you can click on the link that will pop up on the screen now, or you can click on the link in the description section below. But just to show you quickly, in that video, I show you how to make your own guide, because unless you've got a pillar drill, when you try to use these plug cutters, they spin all over the place. Now, by using this guide, you can fix it over a piece of wood. I'll show you now. So that's the plug cutter there. There's your guide. You basically stick that 90 degrees over your piece of timber and then when you hold that in place you put your plug cutter down it holds it still so when you turn this on it spins around like that and it doesn't slide all over your piece of timber anyway that's what i'm going to do now so we're going to get on with that and i'll speed the video up again As you can see here, I've been messing around, drilling a few holes, some fiddly work, securing the bottom of that post to the wall, a few shims behind it, because my wall is really bowed over there, it's not flat or straight, so I'm obviously going to have to go up there with some cork before I paint the wall and it's all finished. So there will be a slight gap behind there, but that's no problem. And then I've just done a dry run with these. Now these were all pre-cut when I ordered them from Stairbox, but I've obviously got to work out the spacing on these, which I think I've done, drawn a few lines, um, and really now I've done this dry run it's just a case of getting the top making sure everything's in place so then I'm just going to use some glue and some pins into the back and into the bottom of this 
secure them in place with the rail on top and hopefully that one will be done. spindles are in now I used a quick calculation which I'll show you in another video actually a separate video on how to work out the spacings of these spindles but anyway once I cut those to size I've used this Gorilla Glue just like a wood glue not the expanding um, polyurethane glue this is just a normal wood glue and then I've been sticking the spacers down with this and the bottom of each spindle. I've been doing the same at the top. Obviously I've been giving it a wipe down after with a wet wipe just to get rid of any excess glue. And then I've been using a little panel nail then in each one of these spaces across there and at the top. And that has held it really solid. This thing won't budge now. Now all I've got to do is move on to the next bit of stairs. I can't do the bit up behind me over here because I've got to leave that bit until I've sort of sorted out the ceiling because once the ceiling's sorted, I'm probably going to have to do the stud timber before I start putting in any balustrade or handrail up there. So that'll be left for now. But if I can do this next bit there, I'm then going to go around the base of the stairs. I still haven't put those little blocks underneath to strengthen up each tread. So I'll be doing that afterwards. So I haven't shown over there is my chop saw which is what I've been using to cut down the infill between each of the spindles. Now without that, it's pretty much impossible because obviously on these angle ones, you've got to cut a little taper into the side of it. So having that down at an angle, you can choose your angle and you can set that off the pre-made posts actually. So I'll just show you here. If you look at that when I received those, you've got that angle, so you can put that up to the blade, set the blade to that angle, and that's exactly how you want to chop each end of your infill for your stairs. Obviously, once you've worked out your spacings based on the calculation I just said about, then you can cut them down to size, fit them in, and they should be fine. If you just cut them off at 90 degrees, obviously when you put them in an angle, you're left with a little gap on the upper side of each one of your infills. So that's no good. You've got to cut them with the angle so they fit in tight. So now I'm just going to put on the caps of the posts that I'm able to so far. So that's three of them. For this, I'm just using the Gorilla Glue again, the polyurethane stuff. So you can see like the blocks are already put in on this section of stairs when it arrived. I've now done all the others there. I've put the Gorilla Glue behind it, not the expanding stuff, just the other stuff. Um, and I put those blocks all the way down to the bottom now. Obviously the spindles are done. You can see they're sorted there, like I said earlier, with one tack on each spacer there. Same there. So pretty much now the majority of the stairs is all done. I've just got that top bit to do. And we can start building some timber frame then around the edge and sort of separate the loft off from the landing. So now I'm going to be fitting a new newel post, handrail and spindles to the landing. Now whilst this isn't part of the loft conversion, I thought I'd show it just for continuity. Now when I fit the new newel post, I'm going to be surface mounting it using a zip bolt fixing kit. 
Now I'm not going to show this in detail in this video, but if you want to see more detail on how to do that, I'll be uploading another video to YouTube where I'll show exactly how to use that to fit the newel post into place.